could be at some cartel leader that's, you know, or some Sandinista or whatever. It's, you know, it could be anybody from Teddy's life that comes in, uh, that comes and takes our kid. So anybody. Uh, oh, by the way, fellas, um, behavior just did it. But Larry, if you want to, you can put this live on your channel if you want to do it. Just, just, just to let you know, you know. Oh, so man, I um, keep forgetting. I'm gonna do it next time. I'm gonna wait till I so I can do it at the beginning next time. I have to, okay. I have to remind myself. Send me the send me the link a little bit before we go live so I can get it all ready. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Yeah. And if you're here from B. Avery's channel, welcome. Glad to have you. I'm Lamont Tyson. That's B. Avery. That's the living legend, Larry. And we're here talking about this snowfall, man. And um, we do have other links. I've got social media, Twitter, IG. I do have a podcast. And I got a TikTok that is actually finally starting to grow. I'm not at 86 followers no more. I'm way above that, finally. Mm -hmm. B. Avery, I didn't get a chance to ask you this. How do you feel about the spinoff with Wanda Forever? coming to California in the form of a snowfall show of her own. Well, I'm definitely cool with it, but I'm just surprised that there's no mention of uh, Leon. Because he's going to die. That's that's what I don't, <laughs> I don't want to happen. So, I mean, I think that was just kind of stupid, though, for them to announce this that's, that's um, right. while the show is going on, because right. that lets us know that Wanda lives... Mm -hmm. uh, unless this is a prequel, which I doubt, and I, I nope. wouldn't be interested in that at all. Then two, they're married, and they just got married. It's not like they've been married all six seasons. They just got married. So, um, I mean, what is does Leon die too? That's not cool. That's I, I mean, I don't know why they would announce this now. They should have waited. Mm. Well, if you know, it could be a throw off. Um, that you know we're gonna because they just said her. We're gonna assume that Leon and nobody else is gonna make it. But in this article, they said. Um, any carryovers from the current series are unknown. So they put mm. that in there to kind of yeah. make you think, but that means they nothing. know yeah. because they this know. season's already shot and done. They know, they know they who know. lives and who dies. So what, what I'm, know. what I'm saying is Larry, I think they're trying to play mind games with us because yeah. it, it really wasn't that hard for us to guess that Wanda was going to live. We just kind of knew Leah. We knew it was over for Leah. We already knew that. Just but what I want to know is, is Sissy going to survive? Um, you know, somebody like that is are they gonna survive? And I guess we'll find out. You know, to be honest with you, Sissy's another one of those characters where I'm just like, I really don't care if she lives or dies. Really? I mean, her I hands are covered in blood too. I mean, she's up there, <laughs> she's up there. She she enabled Lee, you know, uh, she enabled Franklin, Franklin to do this for so long. With all the, you know, with all the the fixing the books and running and, and getting the money so he can do this, buying properties, all this stuff. She enabled him to continue to do this. And then, and now she's up there. She was in bed with the KGB. I mean, it's one thing when you're up there just doing all kinds of craziness and then you want to go out and now sleep with the enemy on top of that. Her hands are so covered in blood. It's hard to feel, it's hard to feel anything for any of them. The only, the only ones that, that I really... I really wanted wanted to make it out, which I'm glad because you know she was sort of collateral damage for a long time with the whole crack thing, and she's got her life together. Leon, I mean, it's hard. It, it's it's hard on one end to like to not to not remember that he's a straight up just murderer, just a straight murderer. I mean, the dude is he's got bodies on him, but at least he doesn't want to be in the game anymore. And that's one of those things, like when you don't want to be in the game. You got to get killed. So, you know, I feel I I, I kind of wanted Leon and, and Wanda to be out. Just they would have been happy if they just got back on a TWA or a PSA because I think that's what they had back then and took taking themselves to Africa and been gone. How um, how how is um Sissy in the in the bed with the enemy? Because she's working with the KGB. Only to execute Teddy. She has no power resources. She's trying to. She's also trying to get revenge on her husband Alton. Yeah, yeah, by working with the enemy. Exactly. What do you mean, that's not. And and then then again, what makes what makes okay? You're 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 demonizing all of these people, saying that they have their hands dirty and they have bodies on them and they're murderers and they're bad, but Teddy is the one that's leading the whole thing. And Sissy's oh, trying I'm to not, take I'm out not. Teddy. 
I'm not I'm not ab absolving Teddy of anything. Don't get me wrong. Just because I'm saying these people are bad, I'm not absolving Teddy and saying Teddy's good guy. No. Ruben we were talking is, about Ru we were Ruben, talking about Sissy at that moment. Ru Ruben and Ruben and Sissy are trying to take out Teddy. Yeah. So how... I don't understand. I don't understand where you're where you're you, seeing the conflict. You, you, she's still you she's said still that, got her hands how, covered in all who, kinds who, of blood. Who, who, she's I know I'm talking. You said that Sissy is in the bed in bed with the enemy. Uh, how is she in? Who is who's the enemy? The KGB. What makes him the enemy? What only makes reason, the KGB? The only enemy? reason I don't like only, only reason I don't like Ruben is because he killed Avi. But he's trying to take but, out. He's trying to take out Teddy. He, the, he, the only reason he's in the show right now is because that he's trying to prove that the United States is smuggling cocaine in their own country. They're trying to do that to destabilize the United States government. Again, how is Ruben the enemy? Because he's here trying to destabilize the United States government. Because they're evil. Okay. So so the United that's, States that's government is the good guys now? I didn't well, say that they're... I'm not saying the United States government is good at all times or bad at all times, but it is... It is our government. It, I mean, it is, it is our responsibility. It's not Ruben's and the KGB's responsibility to institute change from the outside. It's our responsibility to institute change from the inside. So Ruben is still the enemy. He's still a KGB, he's a KGB agent. He's still the enemy. We don't have to like him. We don't have to like the people in power here. It's just like if I get into a fight with if I get into a fight with my brother and I punch him in the face, that's me punching my brother in the face. But if somebody comes from the outside and punches my brother in the face, we have problems. You can't punch my brother. I get to punch my brother. The United that's States, it. the United States government is solely responsible in this show for destroying the black neighborhood. And then we have an outsider. Oh, come on. What, come it, on. This is based on a true story. The American I know it's based on a true story, but no, but you can't say that you can't say the American government is destroying the American government is destroying our on. neighborhood. I get that, but you have to and in but there's a key life, word that you dropped and, in there. And, you said and Ruben is trying day. to disable that, Bruh. but he's the good guy. Oh, come I mean, on, you are you are not falling for the okie doke. Hold on. First of all, hold on. Hold on. First of all, you said the United States government is solely responsible for destroying our communities. They are not solely responsible for anything. You have a whole group of people. You have an organization, several organizations that actively and willingly participated in there that were willing to kill their own family members and their own friends for the for money so that they can go there. So if if the black community simply said, nah, son, we're not doing this then Teddy couldn't have continued. The, the, the U.S. government couldn't have used the black community to gain all this money so they can buy weapons overseas. They only did that because we were willing to do it to our own community. I'm not absolving the United States government for what, for what it did, but I'm just saying we have to take responsibility for our active role in, and, that, in that problem. Now, the other thing is, too, is that, is that when you look at when you look at Ruben, who is a who is a KGB agent, they're not coming over here with with altruistic, you know, you know, uh, 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 ideas. They're not they're not trying. They're not, they're not coming over here trying to say let's let's disrupt this because it's wrong. What they're saying is is that we want to disrupt the United States government and destabilize them. And this is a method for which we can do it. They're not doing this at an altruism. They're doing it because they are an opposition. They are they are an opposing government from an oppo with an opposing form of government, and they want to an opposing political system, and they want to destabilize ours. They're not doing it because they want to they want to help the brothers in the hood and support the American people and make our country better. No, they're uh, going to destabilize I, I never, us. I never said any of that. That is not my argument. You 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 <sighs> can't. You have not pointed out anything that Ruben has done that makes him the enemy. Anything that the American government has done has been 10 times worse. And you're saying that the black people are destroying themselves. Jerome was selling weed at the beginning of this of the show. That doesn't destroy anything. That, and it, 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 we're comparing. We're not talking about cocaine. Jerome selling weed. We're talking about these that, people that have destroyed my, the community I'm selling is, crack. Oh, and where did the crack come from? We have no resources, especially in the 80s at all. I mean, like th this is like this is a, a key linchpin in the destruction of the black community in the real life during the 80s. 
but you're saying that black people are solely responsible for it and not the American government? Come on, bro. Okay. You can't try and but say you didn't have one... any resources. You had Frank Lucas bringing in tons of heroin back in the one... 60s. Okay, one person. You had him bringing in tons of heroin back in the 60s. So you're going to talk about black one, folks one didn't person, know how to run drugs. Hold a, a on. Hand, a handful go of ahead. Let me know when you're million. done so I can speak. A handful of a handful of people out of 40 million? Like we we don't have we don't have any money. We don't even have 5%. We don't have any resources. The American government has trillions. It, 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 it's, it's okay. Okay. So what I want to say now is, is that it's always, it's always one out of 40 million or whatever you want to say. There's always the, the it's always the, the one special person that does the special thing, whether that special thing be good or bad, that's what makes it so different and so special. So to try and say, well, we had one person that did it. Yeah, because that's the way things work. You have somebody that has either the know-how or the knowledge or the connections or all of it that make it happen. And, and so black people have over time, we've had those situations where we've been able to do certain things. Now, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that every black person knows how to go and run drugs. And this one person just did. He was special. That's how, that's why Frank Lucas was able to do it. Now, Franklin Saint, if he didn't have the connect with Teddy, would he have gotten it from somewhere else? We don't know because it didn't happen. He got it through Teddy. But what we do know is that, is that the dude was smart. He was ambitious. He wanted to, he wanted to sell drugs. He didn't care what it did to the community. He saw what it did to his own people. He saw, he saw what the drugs did to his own girlfriend, his own next door neighbor, his own childhood sweetheart, and he didn't care. You can't blame that on the U.S. government. You can say, yes, the U.S. government facilitated this, the, the drugs coming here, but it took us to distribute it to our people and destroy our own community. And, and I'm not going to absolve our, our, our part of that because the, the government did its part as well. We are both wrong. We are both, our community and the government are both wrong for their part in it. That's what I'm saying. Uh, it, it, there, there's been historical research and data proving that any group in the entire world, uh, when, you're, when there's poverty, uh, there's crime. And we know that there was something that was purposely done to black people during that time in this show to put them in that position to begin with any time in history and recorded history that black people had some form of resources we thrived but it was it. continuously shut down by the u.s government and they were put okay. into this position but i don't i don't want to i mean i don't want to keep going back and forth I, I i just um i haven't disagreed with you more and just to circle it back around how this started uh, you still haven't given me a reason on how Sissy is uh, sleeping with the enemy when when they're trying to take care of Teddy, the the the, okay. the, the, the devil, the main villain antagonist in the whole show. So okay. um, I guess if if you can't, I, I guess my thing is if if you can't see how siding with the Russians and the KGB is not sleeping with the enemy, I don't really know how. I don't really know what to tell you as far as as, as far as explained it to you okay, i mean okay. it, hey the you, KGB, if you don't, if you don't okay. see them as the if you don't see the russians and the kgb as the enemy especially during the time of the cold war then i mean you're right if you okay, see them I, as, if I, you I, see them okay. as, a, as the allies instead of instead of the enemies then you're I'll right you i can't explain anything to you that's gonna make it because you have a different point you have a different worldview than i, I, I i'll give you that if the kgb and the russians are the enemy Amer the american government is just as bad or worse that's why i'll meet you there ain't no good guys over here. There's no good guys on this show. Okay, that's fine. I but mean, that's we, really we, where we're, we're not, at. We, the, the, we're, the not good pay, we, we're not going to pay. We're not going to pay for American government. In all seriousness, we're not. In all seriousness, on this in, in this entire show, I think the only person that we could say is a good guy is probably Wanda, and that's it. And there's no other good guys on this show. You know, there's not. Sissy's not a good guy. Say, you huh? can't even say Wanda's a good guy because she's standing by the side of a drug dealer and a murderer and, and enabling him. Right. You can you can even make that argument as well. So you could you could go back to my original point then that there are no good guys on this show. It's ju it's just degrees of bad. Exactly. And that's all Sissy trying to do. She's trying to take one degree of bad and take out the person that took out her husband. And I'm ready to see where she's going to go next because she ain't done yet. But before we move on, let me shout out my super chatters. 
five fifty five. Oh wow, I like that. I'm used to five ninety nine. I'm used to five ninety five, but not five fifty five. You make me feel special. Okay, that girl said, "Why won't Franklin just kidnap Teddy's accountant and make him transfer the money back?" They already know who he is. Either one of you guys want to take that that um question, that comment rather. Well, well I, I don't think they know who the accountant is. Um, I mean, they know somebody else was involved, but I don't think they have any information on them like that just to get them in the bump of a an, an, an night. I could be wrong, though. That's just. I don't think it's that easy, though. I mean, they, he may know where stuff is, but you still you still need access to the accounts. And I'm not sure the guy has access to the accounts like that. He may know where they're at. I mean, like if you know that I bank at TD Bank or Wells Fargo Bank or or Chase or whatever else banks there are out there, that doesn't that doesn't mean you know my account number or my passwords to get in. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, Teddy would just let him die. <laughs> Simple as that. Teddy wouldn't think twice about letting him die. And then my other super chatter comes in. The big homie Demarcus Vaughn, one of the best people to comment on your channels if you got him as a subscriber. He says. Marissa might do something to Julia to prevent her from exposing Teddy because she did say she was going to expose Teddy, fellas. Don't forget that part. She did say that. Um, hmm. Teddy, because Parissa is thirsty for Teddy money. Do y'all feel like Parissa is thirsty for the money? Because no. she basically told Teddy, she was like, look, man, I'm not going to be sitting around here waiting on you forever. You need to make some decisions. What you think? What you think on that one, fellas? I don't think she's uh, no, I, I don't think she cares about that at all. I mean, yeah, I, I think I think she just wants to come some companionship and, you know, feel like she's contributing, you know, because like yeah. she said, she needs purpose. But I, I don't really think she care about the money like that. I don't I think I think like she, she would she be said. happy to have the money if it's available to her. But I don't think she's willing to I don't think she's willing to do anything to to keep it. I don't think she's willing to to fight and kill and shoot or have anybody that she cares about at risk in order to keep it. Agree. So Par Parissa won't do nothing strange for some change, huh? She ain't gonna do nothing like that. Nothing. Mm -mm. Right. No. Here we, here we go. All right, Larry, we're gonna pivot back to you. Very interesting conversation between Lowdown Louie and <laughs> Sister Sissy. And I did basically, like how Sissy checked her ass right here, though. I, I loved it because Louie <laughs> was throwing out all her grievances, how she lost the husband. Sissy had to back slap that ass and say, look, I done lost a husband and a brother, bitch. Mm -hmm. What you done really lost. Mm -hmm. And then she tried to slide in there that Franklin is the reason for all the problems when he's not. Larry, you get the first swing at this bat. How'd you break down this conversation for the people? Yeah, I, I, I watched this and I think it's one of those things where I, I just feel like I feel like uh, Louie is just so delusional. She's delusional and she's one of those people that refuses to accept any responsibility for her own actions. It's just like she keeps on trying to put everything on Franklin and it's not Franklin's fault. The fact of the matter is her own man, her own husband told her this mess is on you. We wouldn't even mm -hmm. be in this situation if it wasn't for you and your greed and your and you're wanting more, more, more. You know, and and now all of that cost cost him his life. And now she instead of just acknowledging that it's her fault and and trying to come to terms with it, she's she's angry and wants to blame Franklin and try and go after him. It's not going to make him it's not going to make her feel any better in the end. Jerome's still going to be gone. And deep down or not even really so deep down, she knows it's her fault. She knows it's her fault. You know, and so there's, I mean, and, and I mean, I guess, I, I guess Sissy had to go over there and speak to her and try and say, she hey, she don't go her. after Frank. But she knew that was a waste of time. She knew that this woman was going to do what she wants to do. So her, her going over there speaking is not going to do any good. Mm. You know, what you got on it, B. Avery? Yeah, uh, the same exact word as Larry, uh, delusional. Um, that's what I was thinking to myself. Like, this woman is crazy. However, in her defense, though, I, I am also on the other side. Like, okay, she is grieving right now. Uh, anybody that just lost a loved one, the way that Jerome went out especially, 
it, it's not going to be thinking clearly. You know, they're, they're going to be emotional. They're going to be grieving. They're going to be lashing out anybody in the well, almost anybody in the world. Uh, but at the same time, I'm biased because I just don't like Louis because still she is not taking any responsibility, any accountability for her role in this. I don't understand how she can say it's Franklin's fault. Franklin did not make her send Buckley to the club to shoot Kane. Nope. She he told that. her specifically not to. Exactly. He yeah, said, yeah I, I forgot. He's like, this. do not do that. And then she still took it upon herself to to handle it. And she got her hand stuck in the cookie jar. You know, there was some loose ends that wasn't cut off, that wasn't tied. And now she lost her husband. And so um, she's dangerous. And I don't know. I, I didn't even think about that. I don't think I didn't. I mean, I'm not saying it's not true, but I didn't think that CC went over there just to tell her that, you know, that she this needs to stop. Uh, I think she kind of made that decision as she was sitting at the table and just kind of saw how Louis uh, was reacting. I kind of think she went over there for some form of closure, you know, so they can they can kind of relate to each other and help each other out through this process. OK, we're both women. We both love Jerome. We both lost him. You know, I need answers. You need answers. Maybe we can comfort each other. And, you know, when she was sitting down, Sissy was like, OK, maybe this is not going to go the way I wanted it to. You know, I'm going to have to, um, you know, set it straight here. You know, because, uh, I mean, Louis was sitting there and was like, well, I understand. You know, Sissy was like, you know, this needs to stop. Yeah, I understand. You know, you still have people that who you care about, Franklin. She was like, I don't. You know, Sissy didn't know that she, I don't think Sissy knew that she was going to reply that way when she rang the doorbell or knocked on the door. So, um, but yeah, Louis still tripping though. Yeah. Hmm. Louis on one, man. She on <clears throat> one. That's for sure. Now, I'll swing this one to UB Avery. Franklin's having a conversation with Leon saying, you know, bro, I need a million dollars, half a million dollars. You got me. And of course, Leon being Franklin boy, his day one, is like, yeah, I got you. I got you. But uh, what you need it for? Franklin says freedom. Now, B. Avery, did you know what freedom Franklin was talking about when he made that statement at the time when this was played on the show? I'm assuming my best educational guess is he's that's money that he's going to give to Oso. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. That's the only thing I could think of. I yep. hope that's the reason, too, uh, because, you know, you want to give your word. And if I was Franklin, if, if that is what he was doing with the money, I would have told Leon, like, hey, man, um, also is in this situation. I promise him this. I only have this. So I got to do this or, you know, yada, yada, yada. And Leon knows who also is Gustavo is. And, you know, I think he would have been cool with that. Um, I mean, I think that Leon trust him, but if I was Franklin, I would have been as transparent as possible, but that's, I don't know. That, that, that's kind of where I think the money was for. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with that. What you got on um, big Lair? Well, when I was watching the scene, I don't know if you recognize right before this this uh, this steal that you have right here. When when they walked past, there was this dude that gave like Leon some real hard looks. Like I saw it. I, I was like, it. "Damn, dude!" Looked like he was like he was ready to put a knife in his back, you know? Yeah. And I was like, I think he's got some problems right there. He needs to deal with. So, I think there's gonna be a I think there's gonna be a shift in power there in the in the PJs. So we'll see. But um, yeah, I think he's gonna give him. I think he's gonna. Uh, I think the money's for Oso, and uh, I think Oso might get out. He might get out because Leon. I mean, uh, Franklin told him to come to the repass, and he's gonna have some for him. So I think he might. Like those passports might have come through early. We'll see. We'll see. But in any case, Larry. even if, if if Franklin gives him that money, I hope he just takes that whatever that bag it's in and just hands it straight over to his girl. Just hands it straight over to his lady and just says, I'm going to try and get out with you. But if I don't, you take this money and you go live your life. Hmm. We'll see about that. Uh, Larry, this one's for you, my man. So Louie is just cracking up. I mean, literally, Larry. It, the wheels is falling off of her so bad that she runs into some garbage cans near Scully Crib. Runs up in the house to get some spiritual healing from Scully and ask him, how did he get through? Floor is yours, Larry. How did you like this scene? And what stood out to you about it? Oh, man. 
I just again, I think she was up there. I don't think she's mourning. I don't think she's mourning Jerome. I think she's mourning the loss of her of her organization because Jerome was the muscle. He was the one that that when they when they walked into a room, they did business because they were doing business with him. She might have been handling the back end stuff, but he was the he was the public face of the business. And you don't have a public face of a business, you can't do business. You know, mm. and I think mm. I don't I don't I still don't think she's more than Jerome all that much. You know, I think that I think she's putting on airs that she is. But I honestly, I don't think she's more than him all that much. I thought this scene was really interesting that of all the people that she went to, she went to Scully and 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 he's it's amazing because this dude, he's he's such a fantastic actor. And especially for this role. I mean, it's just like you know, in this crazy moment with all this, he's so gentle, you know, he's so, like, and yeah. he was just so kind. He was up there with, you know, I think it looked like he had some, some peroxide or some, some whatever antiseptic. And he's cleaning that, he's cleaning that brand that, that Kane gave her. He just, he was just in that moment, he was just really kind and gentle. And it's just, he's so funny. He's such a, that character is so funny because he goes and swings to just like exact opposites. Like one, like one moment he could be a complete maniac and the other side, he's just like this calm, just very thoughtful individual who you think is acting erratic, but it turns out he's really thought all this stuff through. So. <laughs> yeah. B. Avery, what you got on it, my brother? Uh, to be honest, I couldn't say it any better myself. Um, yeah, everything that Larry said, I echo. Uh, and it is interesting to seeing them together. You never would think, but it makes sense. You know, she was having nightmares. She's not able to sleep. You know, she needs to vent. And, you know, they both lost something very close to them. And so, you know, and I, I like that he was real, too. Like, don't you ever want to burn down the house? And he's like, hell yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> But they won't let me, you know, and so he is uh, really grown and matured, and uh, not too many people can do that. So, I, I, yeah, I, I loved it. I loved it. I would, I would, I would love to see him survive and go to the spinoff. Y'all think that that could be that's something yeah. that we can get him going to the spinoff somehow, some way? I would love that. Only if Leon. You know, it's really point. interesting. Whoever write, whoever's writing for him, if, if it's I don't know if it's the same writer for the whole episode, or if someone's writing for he, he's very. Th this character seems very, very in touch with who he is, and I like that about him. Like he knows he's he knows he's a drug dealer. He knows he's this and that, but he's very in touch with who he is. Mm -hmm. so. And that is for sure, my brother. He is definitely in touch with his wacky side. You're damn right. He is. <laughs> All right, B.A., this one's for you. <laughs> now, talk talk about being scared on Christmas Eve. Were you expecting Santa to be in your house and this motherfucker is in your house? Mm. So, B. Avery, <laughs> you come downstairs, you thinking, you hear, you know, your boo thing, hear a little noise, and you thinking, oh, it's nothing, it's the child. And then you walk in your kitchen, this MF is sitting in there, you know, eating your toast and rubbing your dishes and licking your spoons and shit. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do, B. Avery? What kind of conversation uh, you have with this clown? To be honest, man, you can't do a damn thing. You are mm. uh, out of you're out of your league. Mm. You have to wow. truly uh, humble yourself here and be like, you know what? I am, um, you know, I, I am not in Kansas anymore. You know, this these people will kill me. I need to, you know, tread softly. You know, not don't curl up like a coward in a corner. You know, but you did need to be playing grandmaster chess or trying your best. Uh, mm -hmm. because it was just too easy for him. I mean, also knew, like, damn, if this dude, if he wanted to, he could have just came in and blew our head off. You know, so you don't want to just be, you know, have an ego and just be defiant. Yo, what the fuck are you doing in my house, motherfucker? I'll do this. No, you won't. No, you won't. I mean, you know, like, also, he'll he'll catch a body quick if he have to, but, He will. You know, he will. But this guy's just, he's uh better than him. Uh, you know, as far as uh, I guess assassin skills, or however you want to describe it. So, um, also, um, yeah, I don't blame him. And his wife was like, "This is too much," and he can't. You can't argue with her about that. You know, just like yeah, I, I want you. The the ultimate goal is for you and the kids to survive. Maybe it's best that I don't know where y'all go. And mm, uh, mm -hmm. he was also like the way he was standing when he was talking to her. He was apologizing with his body too. You know, just like I, you know, like I've tried my best. That's all I got, you know. And so it was yeah. really humbling. It was really humbling. 
what you got on it, Larry? What what you gonna do if Ruben the Cuban KGB was sitting in your house, you know, drinking out of one of your Larry cups? <laughs> you know, this is the thing that always gets me when I when with these with these guys, women too, I guess, but I don't understand why these folks just don't leave. Like, just be gone. Get out, leave the country, and tell, you know, maybe you, hopefully you get your, your passports from Franklin, but if not, tell them, like, hey, you know, send them here or have somebody come here and dip out to Mexico or something, cross the border. You can drive right across, disappear into the country, and and get those passports later and then be gone. I mean, you don't need a half a million dollars to start your life over. I mean, back then, back then you can get an apartment, you can get a nice, you could probably rent a whole house for a thousand dollars a month. That's twelve thousand dollars for an entire year. I mean, you think about that. If you have just like, I'm sure he has to have a few grand around. I mean, he, uh, let's say you have thirty six thousand dollars. That's three years of rent paid up front on a house somewhere, and. And you, if you can't get your life back together, if you can't go to school or get a trade or something and start your life over again in three years, I mean, come on. I, I just, mm. I just don't understand why, why they just, why you just ha- can't go. Like, leave. What's the point? What I mean, it's not worth your life. It's not worth your family's life. Just dip out. And Larry, I mean, even be- you go to another country where it's even cheaper. Just go to some other country where it's cheaper to live. You know. Could it be love, Larry? Could it be love? Love, love, love. Take that with you. Oh, 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 be be Avery. God, leave, man. Look, Crazy me and Larry. Is it love? Stop see it, how stop he it, do stop. us? <laughs> see how he do us? We already behind the eight you know? ball, Larry. And he up here, <laughs> boy. Uh, what little what little groupies we had, we just lost their asses, Larry. Thanks to this guy right here. His, his very white singing ass. <laughs> Ladies. Me and Larry can do other things that B. Avery can't do. You just know that. Oh, okay. just, just, <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. It just sounds oh, good. Yeah. Let's you know, go it sounds provocative. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's thought provoking. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. All right, B. Avery, I'm coming back to you on this one, man. Now, this this was sad for me, man. Like, because this it almost felt like a breakup, even though it wasn't. Wanda forever mm. got her stuff and said, "I'm leaving. I'm leaving the PJ. I'm leaving the hood. I'm going to. I'm going somewhere else." Talk to me, B.A. How did this make you feel? And what was your thoughts at this moment? Well, first she she did look good. She was kind of cute right here. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's yeah. just nice to see her done up after she was, you know, the other way. Hundred percent. You know, uh, for so long. Uh, but this was actually kind of funny to me, like Leon's reaction. Like, you leaving me? What? You leaving me? You know, uh, I mean, that's a that's a real honest reaction. Because what is he supposed to <laughs> what is he supposed to think? She got she got a whole uh, uh, shopping bag full of Walmart goodies, uh, baby wipes and towelettes and toothpaste and deodorant and all that. And it so, looked like uh, she was moving into campus. She yeah, was moving yeah, the first day here, You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, so I mean, uh, I don't know. I believe in Leon. I don't. I don't blame her for feeling the way she feels, especially with Jerome just being, just dying. And also she don't want to relapse, you know? Um, right, right. She don't, I mean, it's not, it's, that's not selfish. Like, you know, she, I wouldn't want to go back to that place either. And when she's walking outside and seeing black women passed out on the ground while other men are spray painting the body, you know, uh, that can be very triggering. So it sucks, man, because I feel both sides like, she does need to get out of there. They do, but at the same time, Leon is not trying to forget where he came from. He's trying to fix it. And um, you know, I I just I want them to both make it out. So Yeah, man. What you got on it, Big Larry? Yeah, Leon should just simply, you know, he has if if he's got if he has five hundred grand he can hand over to you know to Franklin, he has plenty of money around. And yeah. he should take that money and his wife, and he should get on a plane and go back to Ghana. Because I can tell you right now, if you have $500,000 in Ghana, you never have to work again. Ever. Mm. So, Mm-mm-mm. go there. And never work again. You know? Maybe you want to stop in, maybe you want to stop in Europe on the way and go set up a, a Swiss account, something that you can, you know, that you can draw on so that you have your money someplace that that's not going to be touched. And go live your life. 
Like if you wow. literally, if you just get up and go to LAX and leave, yeah. what's gonna happen? They're not. The brothers aren't coming to, to Ghana to come find you. They probably don't even have passports. He didn't even have a passport until he was gone. He had to ask Avi about it. He was like, I could just leave. I could do that. He was like, yeah, bro, get a yeah. passport. You can go wherever you want. Dude, these brothers mm -hmm. don't have passports. They don't know how to get out of the country. Just literally just pack your bags or don't. Buy some new stuff. Just, you know, just go. I don't, I, I don't mm. understand. I don't understand what the hesitation is. I don't understand so Larry, why you're talking about I'm, I gotta get this set up so I can pass it off to somebody else. Why? Why? Let them fight it out. It's not your problem. You didn't want to be there doing he, this again anyway. It, yes, he do, Larry. That was his own mission that he wants to be there. That was his own mission. He wants to be there. I he know, but like he was talking said, about before he didn't want to be there. So if you don't want to be there, then just leave. That's the problem. He wants to be there. Now, this is a good pivot point for you, Larry. I'm going to keep this one on you. So Wanda was talking about leaving, you know, moving out. How did you feel about the conversation where she had where Sissy was like, look, I want you to take my job. You can run the center, blah, blah, blah. Larry, this is when I kind of knew. This was the moment I knew for sure. Before I heard anything about Wanda getting a spinoff, I kind of was like, I'm 100% sure Wanda going to survive. And I'm probably sure that Sissy is either going to go to jail or die. What what'd you get from mm. this conversation when she passed the torch? Oh, man, when I heard this, my first thought was, no, it's too close to home. Just go. Go somewhere else. Leave. Like, get back on that plane and go back to Ghana. Maybe go to school in, in, in Arizona or someplace far enough away that you can, <laughs> you know, that you can visit if you need to. But, you know, but my not so close to Arizona. Just pop up. Something, <laughs> you know. Arizona. Can she go to Cal State? Can she go to USC? <laughs> That's too close. USC is right down the street from the PJs, man. Okay. Well, can she it's, can she can she go to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill? Yeah, do that. Do that. Go go to UNC Chapel Hill. There you go. Go to go to go to North Carolina Central or something. You know. Okay. Do that. Okay. But but don't don't stay there in one of in one of Franklin's drug apartments. You know, and. And just, I mean, I get it. You're trying to, you're trying to clean up the mess, but it's like, how do you do that? It's, it's like one of those, it's one of those contradictions in, in that's, that's going to continue to mess with your mind. It's like, okay, I'm living in this apartment that's paid for with, with drug money while I'm up here working at a shelter, helping people that are on drugs. And I'm basically reaping the, I'm reaping the, the, you know, the benefits of this, of all these drugs, of all these drugs while I'm trying to help them, but then I'm actually benefiting from it because of all the apartments and everything. It's just, just leave. I understand, <laughs> just go. There's nothing there for you. She already said before they even came back, she said, there's nothing there for me. There's nothing there, so why stay? That's it. What you got on it, B. Avery? Um, I mean the same thing. Like I, I think it's nice. Well, I think it's nice that CC offered up the 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 career. Um, I think Wanda should stay because uh, it's not in the PJs. Uh, you know she she don't got to go back there for what she can just you know take the job or yeah. I, I mean I I just like the fact that the characters don't want to just abandon where they came from and just let it fall into chaos like. You know, I mean, you know, yeah, let, yeah, let me make my money and then I can leave and never work again. But, you know, I'm I didn't do anything to help my people. I think there's a way to do that. Um, and I just think that's what, excuse me, Leon is trying to do. That's why I said earlier, I just I understand both sides. I understand. I completely understand where Ronald's coming from, but I also completely understand where Leon's coming from. So it's just, it just sucks. I can tell you a great way that Leon can help his people by stop selling drugs. Leave. Just dip out, be out, be gone, stop selling. That's one way he can help his people. Now somebody else is gonna pick up the is gonna pick it up and and keep serving, but that's how he can help by stop selling. That's kind of like me and your prostitution argument. You argue that it should be legalized. I could argue, or somebody else can argue that it should just be eliminated. If you're gonna have it, let it be safe. That's what Leon's trying to do. If you're going, if we're gonna sell the drugs you know let's do it for a limited time and have it you know the best case scenario the safest possible the least collateral damage 
you can't you can't do that because you always are going to have you can't sell drugs safely because even if you create a marketplace for which it's for which you don't have people dying and killing in order to say it, to sell it the end user is still going to suffer there is no safe there is no safe way to be to do drugs if you're if you're in crack, if you're if you're addicted to crack you cannot be a safe crack addict so there is there there I mean the only thing to do is to stop. And since someone's going to keep on selling drugs because there are people out there that are always going to use drugs, the only thing that you could do really not the only thing, but one of the things you can do is not participate in it. So if drugs are going to be sold no matter what cuz we you said that somebody's going to come in and take his place, don't you think it should be the best system? set up as possible if it's inevitable that they're gonna if it's inevitable that you're gonna have drug addicts and drug dealers shouldn't you have the best setup as possible that's all that's I would, all I, I would say i would say yes if you plan on staying there but he i mean but if he's talking about setting everything up so that he can leave then who cares just leave leave that responsibility to somebody else you're talking about trying to set up a a peaceful criminal organization it's not gonna be. It's a it's a fool's errand. It's not gonna happen. I, I, didn't, I didn't say nothing about peaceful. I just said the, the best setup possible. It, it, it. Okay. Well, I, I just I I think if you run a if you run an organization, it's like if you work for you know with the Hitman Association like John Wick, you can set up a, a great organization, but the end user is still being killed because you're you're murdering folks. I mean, there is. I mean, you could try and make things run as smoothly as possible, but smoothly as possible doesn't really matter when basically you're still killing folks. You're just killing folks slowly with drugs. I mean, the, the best option, I think, for Leon is to simply not participate in it. You're, you're muted. Uh... Oh, no, that's, that's all I got. I'm, I'm... No, no, that was Lamont. me. Oh, okay. That was me. Um, this one's for you, B. Avery. Now this, I've been looking for this hookup that, excuse me, to happen, and it does, and it sound it started to seem like there was going to be some friction. So, B. Avery, who did this man got this gun out on? Also, Gustavo. Also, because he at first he thought Also had donned him out when we all know, and he also made it clear to him I haven't done that. But the problem that they have is all these federal organizations won't Teddy. And in essence, they kind of want Franklin too. So Oso is going to do the Oso thing and help Franklin because Franklin is trying to help him. So B. Avery, what's going to go wrong? What when, when this compromise was made, Franklin put that gun down. What was you thinking when these two sat beside the truck? Me personally, I was saying to myself, this is the last time they're going to have peace and quiet with each other. This is it. There ain't going to be no more peace and quiet for them ever again. But um, what do you think, behavior? I am on the complete opposite of you, sir. Uh -oh. I feel like they're going to ride into the sunset together. Not joking. I think they're going to make it. I'm going to speak into existence. And I don't blame Franklin for pointing the gun. Because um, yeah. that was just out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Yeah, the DEA busted me and stole all my money. Oh, also, the KGB broke into my crib and they know about you. What the F? Oh, what the <laughs> hell? You know, like. <laughs> that is a that is a true blind side right there. So I'm surprised Franklin didn't actually let some off, you know. Uh, but I mean, he calmed down, you know, because he did. They that's I mean, his boy. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it, like look at his face. He's confused and wants to cry at the same. He don't know what to think. He's just completely discombobulated. Right. You know. Right. But he came too. And also, man, the look that also gave him too, like, oh, you're gonna just shoot me, homie? But I understand. You know, it was like, damn, I'm in a pickle. That's why he hit the hood of his car so hard. Uh, mm -hmm. I, feel, I feel sorry for everybody in the same way. I did, here, but, man. <laughs> but that, that mean, that picture you got right there, man, um, I think they're going to be okay. I really do. Um, you know, and it, it's good that also was like, look, they all want Teddy. Teddy is the ringleader here. So, mm -hmm. you know, the DA want Teddy. Ruben want Teddy. Uh, also want Teddy. And Franklin want Teddy. Teddy got to go. So I, I, I'm 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 good with this one right here. I think they're gonna be all right. Larry, sprinkle some truth down on this situation. 
I'm not saying what B. Avery said wasn't the truth. I just want Larry's mm. form of the truth in something Frankly. that is an opinion. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that <laughs> – <laughs> I, I mean, I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't convinced for a hot minute that he was gonna shoot Oso there. It just no. Oso they looked at him like you're not gonna shoot me, man. I'm gonna tell you what I gotta tell you, and 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 that's that. And he's just, you know, I mean, it's one of those things where the walls are closing in on all of them. It's not like Franklin doesn't understand. It was just like he it was almost like he was like, damn, they came at you too, you know? And right, you know. So it's just, I mean, I feel I. I feel like, you know, I feel like well, like if he's going to get out, he just needs to get out, stop dicking around, trying to wait for some money and passports and just go and and try and get that, try and see if Franklin can get that stuff to you later or at least get the money and go and then try and get the passports later, you know. But, I mean, these two, I, I think they're probably, I'm not convinced that Oso is going to live because. Me neither. Me he neither. wants out. And we know the rules in this thing. You want out, you got to go. And we know that Franklin ends up in jail. If they if they go if they stick to the if they stick to the to the real life script, we know Franklin ends up in jail. So and I'm Franklin not sure what happened. I'm too. not sure, huh? Franklin wants out the game too, Larry. He he does, but he's definitely not trying to get out the game just yet. He wants he out wants the game 70, eventually. He wants his seventy-two million. If he, he had wants his, his yes, he wants million. his millions. He wants Teddy dead. Yeah, you know. But yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm glad. I'm glad he didn't cap him right there. I hope. It, I hope if Oso shows up to the repass, I hope he's able to get his passports and get gone. Um, somehow, I feel like somehow I feel like that girl, his girl, is gonna get capped. In the process, I think I think the KJB the KJB dude is going to come at him. I think she's going to get shot in the crossfire, and uh, it's going to go all sideways. So, but you know, those two have definitely bonded. I, I imagine when you get locked in a tiger cage together, you know, you you form some lifelong bonds. Damn <laughs> you know? right, damn right. <laughs> um, we, we ladies and gentlemen, we've got some breaking news, and this better be breaking news. When I get off this thing and go check the SJ show. 18 only. I want to see where is he going. So the breaking news is um, Lamar Jackson might be leaving the Ravens. Where is he going? SJ, show. Let us know where is he going. Is he going to be going to Snowfall? Is, is he going to be on Wanda show in Snowfall? Is he going to the Miami Dolphins? Is he going to the Washington Commanders with mm. Magic Johnson about to buy the team? Let a brother know where he's he really? going. Yeah, Magic Johnson about to buy the Washington Commanders. And that hmm. would be a complete slap in the face to that punk-ass owner that they currently have, and I would love to see that happen. For you, Larry, hmm. even though Louie is too through, she don't want to hear nothing. She's blaming white men. She's blaming Franklin. She's blaming anybody that gets in her way for the death of Jerome. Well, she gets a call from a white man, and that white man says this is not a choice. Even though she was acting a little indifferent, she shows up to the meeting. Teddy says what we already know. He wants Franklin. She said, I'm not giving you a damn thing, white man, until my funeral. And then after that, since we got a common enemy, we can take him out. Larry, talk to me about this whole thing with Louie. Uh, because Louie has made promises to two grown men. She's mm -hmm. promising Teddy that after the funeral, she's going to help him. And at the end of the show, she promised Franklin that he's going to help her. So is she going to help either one of these two or she's just going to put them into the room together and let them kill each other? What you got? Well, first of all, isn't that chick, wasn't that her former lover? Uh, I think so. No, no. Is it? Or no. I, I, that I think it, that's uh, the it, friend in the other it, state that they was giving the drugs okay. to. That's what Power told me. In, in, in Arkansas. Yeah. Arkansas, right? Arkansas. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because Larry, remember, um, the husband is going to be in the funeral. He plays on power. Remember, mm. okay. Jannard, uh, right. So right there. Yeah. So I, I guess my um, – I'm thinking she's probably going to be more inclined to help Franklin 
She'll probably set them both up, though. She she probably will just set them both up where she gets them both in the same room and just says, you all can go ahead and kill each other if you want. I You know, I, I helped you, Teddy, get get at him. I helped you, Franklin, get at him. Now you guys you guys are here. Deal with you. Deal with each other. She might do that. But I think she might be more inclined to help Franklin than than Teddy, because I mean, after all, he did save her life, you know, yep. for whatever reasons he wanted to say. Whether she liked him, didn't like him, believed him, didn't believe him, he still did that. He still did save her life, and he could have left there. He could have left her there to be to be brutally raped and turned out and drugged up and everything else. They could have had her up there on you know as a as a, a junkie on fig turning five dollar tricks, and he and he saved her from that. So hmm. wow, what you got on it, B. Avery? Uh, I just like the fact that she said, "Leave me alone." That was kind of funny and um I, I you know i don't know it was kind of weird you think teddy actually cared that jerome was dead he seemed surprised by that or he could just be disappointed like damn i lost an employee you know so i, I don't know but be a i felt like i felt like teddy for a moment there with him not knowing how jerome died until she tried to blame it on franklin i think that might have scared teddy because teddy know how close franklin was to jerome and if he is gone that mad to take out Jerome, I think Teddy was kind of a little shook like this boy. If he, if he would do that with his own his own uncle, mm -hmm. he's really on a war path. That's kind of what I got from it, B. Mm. Nice. Nice. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I get it. You don't want to have your $73 million walk away from you, but I feel like you have a few million – Go go go! Turn those turn that turn. I think he I think he has a couple million already. Just take that couple million, and and go flip it. Go put it in the stock market. You know, bro, he, make some money, bro. He don't, bro. <laughs> I don't think he know nothing about the stock market back then. And even if he did, it was hard as hell. Like it wasn't at your fingertips during the eighties. You know what I mean? Like you really had to get, know a broker especially if you want to get things done the way we're doing them on Robin Hood and stuff like that. But his, but his mom, know, but, Frank, but they do know his girl knows his girl's mama knows they, I mean, he has people around him that know how to, how to play that game. He could do it. Just They know how to do real estate. Everybody around him is into real estate. That's what they was doing. Real estate. And, I thought the mom, I thought the, I thought what's her name's mom was doing some other stuff, but my, I guess my point is there's other avenues for him to work with. He has some money. He does it. He has, so he still owns those properties. He could sell yeah. that stuff and move somewhere else and be an entirely legitimate businessman. If he could just let the fact that this stuff got stolen go. Yes. Teddy got you. That's your fault. You got caught slipping. You shouldn't have had $73 million in a place that he could reach it. I mean, that's you. You were the dummy. You got you. I mean, if I have seventy three million dollars of ill gotten gains, no one's going to be able to find it all in one place. Or, there. I mean, he's not going to come in my house and be like, "Oh, look at here. Here's a folder. Here's a whole dossier of how to get all my money." No, it's going to be in all kinds of places. I'm going to have safe deposit box with diamonds in it. I'm going to have Swiss accounts, care you know, accounts in the in the Caymans, the Caribbeans, Panama. I'm going to have money in so many different places that by the time you get to one account. I'm going to know that I need to start hitting the other accounts and emptying stuff out and moving my money. You know, you're not going to be able to hit everything up at once. That's his fault. He should just take what he had, take the millions that he has left and go live a happy life with your baby and your, and, and your wife and your baby. I don't understand why these people have such a hard time doing, just being happy like that. It's not enough money. Not enough money. A couple million isn't enough money back in, in the 80s? It ain't even enough money now. Lamar Jackson, the same football player we're talking about, he has the opportunity to take three years, $144 million guaranteed, but he's trying to hold out because he wants however many years, $200 million guaranteed. You know, I think I read a stat that once you are worth $1 million, every million above that, it's not equal. It has an affinity effect. Once you are worth, once you get to the point where you are worth a million, every million above that million has an affinity effect. If you don't know what that means, ladies and gentlemen, it means more than same value. It's not the equal part. It's more. 
And so that's where Franklin is at. He wants two million. That don't do nothing for him. He wants at least half of that seventy-two million back. Then maybe that will get him out the game. B. Avery, we to the final lap, brother. We at that funeral, and boy, you know how these TV shows love to do funerals and dinner table scenes. <laughs> it's gonna be some shenanigans. So we start out. We get a good look at Scully. Slick back, you know, kind of got that rugged pimp of the new era. And then I don't know what the hell Dion wearing. My man looked like a damn <laughs> oxymoron checkerboard. What the what in the hell? Dion? <laughs> but you got him. Then you got my main man Einstein up here with the Reverend. Then you got old Detective Cockroach, man. who was who had to answer a pretty tough question and look this woman straight in her face. So close to her, to all the juice on his head dripping all in her face. Those weren't hmm. tears. That was his juices. Then we get to a picture of her. You would think that she'd be done cleaned her face up by now, wouldn't be at the funeral, looking like she wanted to be buried too, but she's there anyway. I'll skip that. And we had a scene where Leon and Dion, now this is why I said me and Larry argued that Le Dion ain't about no smoke. He could have done something here. But mm. instead of doing something, he looked at this man and said, are you going to get the people that did this to Rome? Leon turned his back on him and said, yeah, I'm going to handle it. And last but not least, the confrontation between Louis and Franklin. Franklin basically said, I saved your ass only because you said you was going to give me Teddy. Floor is yours, mm. B. Avery, any point you want. Yeah, man. Well, first, um, I like the intro of the song. They brought back the uh, the Fugees and even taking it back to the original in the 80s with Inya. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was jamming. I took uh, I took that back like three, four times, uh, listening to the song or whatever. <laughs> I even shared it on my story to promote the video. So that was that was nice right there. I like that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, man, Scully is funny. And Dion, I don't know what he got on. But what it what was funny to me was when Scully walked up to the Reverend and Einstein and gave him that like that little look, that little smug look. And Einstein was like, what the hell was that? And the Reverend was like, what the fuck? You know, what the fuck was that? I was laughing my ass off because I was wondering <laughs> what the hell he was doing, too. Uh, I remember Tara was like, yeah, I think that Scully going to shoot up the club or something. I'm like, what? He's not going to do all that, but she thinks he's he's up to something. But that was a weird little uh interaction right there i also love the fact uh, like the the leon versus dion i was nervous i was like no dion like this is not the place you know like what are you doing you lost it was a straight up man-to-man -man, one on one fight and you lost but i was so mm -hmm. relieved when he was like hey man did y'all take care of the dude that did this to rome and I, at the same time the way that leon turned around i was like bro i'm not scared of you i'm not backing down i beat you once i will beat you again <laughs> you know, uh, but that, that that was funny right there to me. Um, but what also uh, one of the best parts of this was when Wanda was right next to Leon and she was like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm just so scared, baby. And I just think what's happening to you is going to happen to I mean, what happened to um, Jerome is going to happen to you and I don't want to lose you. And da, da, da. he just turned around and just like assured her. It was like, well, I'm right here with you, Mrs. Simmons. And. You know, I'm not mm. going nowhere. And she just seemed like, okay, daddy. Like, you know, and I, it, it was nice. That was, it was a lot of I good would... love and, and emotions in there. And I also don't know why, uh, I don't know what else Louis wanted Franklin to say at the end. Like, why did you come back and save me? Well, I was brought up to respect women and I just can't mm -hmm. just sit around and let a woman be gang raped. You know, even if mm -hmm. I like her or not, you know, that's just a, a code. You know, that's his duty. That's what man is supposed to do. One hundred percent. What else was he supposed to say that that would have said <laughs> that would have stopped um, her from calling him the devil? I don't know. Maybe I, I know. Be, that, I know what she I know what she was thinking he was going to say and probably the audience, too. But he never said it. She was thinking he was going to say he did it for Unc, and that those words never came out of his mouth. I mean, that's, I thought that mm -hmm. was obvious, but I got you. Mm -hmm. What you got on this whole thing, Big Larry? What about yeah. Cockroach Cop? What oh, about yeah. the Cockroach Cop? I forgot about him. Yeah, he looked her straight in his looked her straight in the eye, lied to her. But 
I mean, what, what, you know, what should they expect? I mean, the dude was a was a dirty cop and a crackhead. I mean, what did they can't expect him to be honest and and tell the truth? I mean, he they is. Can't. They 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 hire him because he is exactly who he is, and to expect him to be something different is foolish on your part. You know, yeah. yeah. And so he looks like a wiener. He do. <laughs> But you know, as far as uh, as far as him coming back for her and him saying, you know, I came back because because of what you said you were gonna do, and then she says he's a devil. And he was, he had this sort of a he had sort of a, a quivering look, a lip, like he was trying to keep from smiling. Like, <laughs> yeah, you have no idea. You know, he really did have that sort of vibe. Like, you think I'm the devil because of what I've done so far. I basically have just been released. I've just been freed of all restraints. And I'm, you want to see the devil? You're about to see him now. And, mm. you know, so, mm. but I mean, she could want to know. Maybe she wanted to, maybe she wanted to feel good about it. I mean, he could have just simply said, look, you know, whatever happens between us, we're still family, you know, and, if anybody's going to kill you, it's going to be me. Or you could have said whatever he wanted to say like that. But no, no matter what he said, it wasn't going to be enough for her. She wasn't going to be, it wasn't going to be enough. So it didn't really matter what he said. So, mm -hmm. okay. but I still, I still okay. think she's just this whole thing of blaming Franklin for all this. this. This whole thing is your fault. Jerome dead, the funeral, all this, it's your fault. This is all, all that blood is, is, is on your hands. You could have simply have just continued to roll and, and, and make your millions that, that Franklin has set you up to make, and you could have been happy. Mm. But that wasn't good enough. You wanted to, you wanted to, you want to have what you want to be looked at like a man. That's basically what she said. I want to be looked at like a man. Okay. Well. Wow. Okay. Well, final prediction I want to get from both of you fellas, then we'll jump on out of here, man. Larry, when she gets Teddy and Franklin together. Who is she going to rock with? No one. She's not she's not rocking with anybody. She's she's she is only about self. She's not she's not going to pick a side. She might she might seem like she's going to pick a side. She's going to let them try and kill each other. Okay. So, it's about what side she gonna, she's going to be on her side. Behavior, who do you think she's going to rock with? Teddy, Franklin, or herself? Um, unfortunately, I think she's going to do what Larry said. I don't want her to do that. I want her to team up with, um, you know, Sissy and uh, stop Teddy. I think Teddy may have Franklin at gunpoint and about to blow his head off. And then she make what I want to happen is she, from a distance, not too far, you know, pulls a trigger and stops Teddy from, you know, taking him out. And then Teddy, not Teddy, but Franklin and, and Louis don't have to shake hands or hug each other, but they can give each other like some nod, like, all right, you know, you came back and saved me. I just saved you. You go your way. I'm gonna go my way. You know, um, you know, I, I just I don't I don't know. I, I'm I'm really sad. Um, I mean, I was disappointed at the end of season five, you know, when uh Franklin went to the hospital and told Kane that hey, it was Louis. I was like, damn, there's no coming back from none of this. And I still don't see a way. And so I just want, I don't want anybody else to die. I know somebody is, but I don't want anybody else to die. And I just want Franklin to get at least 50 million back. But, you know, I doubt <laughs> Think about this. Me. Think about this. If it, as smart as Franklin is, as somebody who was able to take basically no, no knowledge of, geopolitics and 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 large scale organizations and he was able to create this massive massive drug empire and mm -hmm. work with these governmental agencies imagine what he could have done if college education in this country was free he probably wouldn't have ever have gone and sold drugs he probably would have went to college and and did something absolutely spectacular you know he probably would have been an absolute rock star in whatever field he went into. Instead, I, know, I wonder who was uh, responsible for college not being free and all the hurdles that 
people that look like Franklin would have to go to to attend college. But you know, your point. Mm-hmm. He's saying that the same people, the same, point, I mean, the same people, the same people that try to destroy us from the outside also want to try to destroy you from the inside mentally. They don't want you to get ahead either way you look at it. I don't, I don't think that's I don't think that's in dispute that there's that there's issues with our government. I don't think that I don't think anybody's disputing that. OK, I'm just simply saying the KGB is not our friend. The Russians are not our friends. But behavior saying the government ain't your friend either. They pretend like they are, but they ain't. Especially for um for I, um, and, sissy. And I didn't sissy. say, and I didn't say that the KGB are our friends. Those words never came out of my mouth, and those thoughts never processed on my head. I said I don't understand how sissy is sleeping with the enemy. You know, she she is she is teaming up with somebody that has a mutual goal. You know, keep your friends close, but you're well, I guess you can even, even any closer. But you know, if hey, she 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 needed a powerhouse to help her take down the enemy, and you know, after she's done with Ruben, you go your way, I'm gonna go my way. We don't gotta be friends and have dinner together. I'll never have to see you again. Thanks for helping me take out Teddy. I'll never want to see you again. Peace. And you but think you they're gonna let that happen. Is- you think no, they're gonna I, let that happen? I, I, You're gonna think they're gonna. No, she's gonna be, no, she's that's, gonna know I'm, all. No. She's gonna know all these plans and have and, and know all of the the dirty things that's that the, they did. You don't the think goal. they're gonna tie up that's, her loose ends? And she's gonna be. Goal, she's though. just gonna be another dead nigga in there. That's all they're gonna do. They're gonna. She's gonna do. She's gonna help them do what they need to do. And once they've once they've reached their objectives, the point. they're gonna tie up the loose ends. And she that's is a loose point. end. That's not the point. Of course, she is a loose end. I didn't say that. I didn't say that 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 they didn't have. Excuse me. I didn't say that they don't have loose ends that they're gonna tie or anything. I didn't say any of that. I just said that that's the goal. That's her. That is that is what she's trying to accomplish. Okay. Like, okay. Let me. Let me. I'm let me trying help, to take let, out this person. Let me explain to, to you like this. Person, then. So let's team up and take. Let this me. Person out. Let me explain to I'm you not, like I'm not this. Arguing anything else. Let me explain to you like this. Then, since you don't seem to understand what I'm saying as far as the 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 and I'm sleeping with Emmy. There. If you have, if you're in your house. There's a big difference between living with somebody in your house that that hates you and wants and 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 makes your life difficult, but they're in the same house. They're not throwing matches on the sofa and leaving the gas on and, and lighting cigarettes trying to burn down your house from within. It's their house too. They're 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 not trying to burn down your house and their house. But the people on the outside when they start trying to burn down your house, they're also trying to burn down your house. You need to protect your house from those people. The people in your house at those times, maybe you have to work with the people that you don't like to help to keep those people from the outside from burning down your house. I don't know. Now, you may have people that are making your life difficult, but they're not trying to burn down their own house. Lamont, where are you? Where are you give me the top breaker. I'm not saying that the I'm not saying the US government is is is, is some are the nice guys and that everything is hunky dory with them. I'm not saying that, that they've done everything wonderful, that they're not bad. I'm simply saying that the Russians and the KGB are also our enemies and our enemies from someplace else who have absolutely no, they have that's absolutely fine. no good but intentions. You, they, they, yeah, they not only want to hurt you, you, but they want to you burn condemn, down your house. You can't condemn sissy for, for, um, uh, teaming up with somebody to take out a mutual threat is what I'm saying. You, you, you that, can that's... if they want to not only take out oh, the okay. mutual threat but burn and down that is not, the house and that, has not, and been est- that has not been established in this show. You are reaching. What are you talking about? The guy said that was their objective. They wanted to have Ted. They didn't want to kill Teddy and stop the drug trade. They wanted to have him arrested so that they can use this to destabilize the government. What are you and talking about? I, and that's they great. actually let's, said the words. Let's, okay, let's destabilize the government. I'm 100% with that. The government is corrupt and evil, and they oppress people. Well, I, no. Hey, I, no. I guess I'm Team KGB then, if that's what they're trying to do. So, hey. I'll go with the last word on this. For me, it's just simple as this. Sissy want revenge from anyone that's powerful enough to help her get revenge on the person that she feel like took out her husband, which happened to be the KGB. You know, I don't don't even think Sissy knows what all that means other than Ruben 
is with some covert organization that is powerful enough to take on a man that she knows is powerful and backed by the government. And Sissy really knows there. exactly what it is. Sissy was a panther. Her husband was a panther. They were the ones that were talking about dealing with the CIA in the begin to be in the very beginning. She was the one with her and Alton directed Franklin to the bookstore to go talk to that person and get the information about the CIA. She knows exactly what they are capable of and who uh, they are. Larry, she, Larry, Larry. As nicely as I could, I said, I'm getting the last word on this. Can I have the last word? Why was Jannard from Power Book 4 at the funeral? Because he was the cousin in Arkansas. And having said that, ladies and gentlemen, shout out to Tony for the $10. We out of here. Let's see what these fellas have got going on on their channels. Um, Larry, start with you. What's going on on your channel from now through the weekend? Oh, man, I have my weekly haul video tomorrow uh, at 7.30. So, you know, once a week when I get all my packages in, I, I uh, open them up live on camera. So if you want to come see what kind of goodies I have for this week, uh, check me out tomorrow. I'll be on at 7.30. 7.30 Eastern time, tomorrow. by the way. Yeah. Eastern time, not California time. Yeah. <laughs> not Mountain <laughs> or Pacific. And B. Avery, what you got going on on your channel, my brother? Check out me and Tara's recap on this same episode on my channel, Snowfall Season 6, Episode 7. Also, check out my Power Book 2, Ghost Season 3, Episode 3 recap. Uh, that's going to be posted in a few hours. I'm also trying to go live this weekend for Bel Air, Episodes 5 and 6. I'm also going to go live on Saturday for... American Maroon, and Sunday I'm going live for Movie News Roundup show number 100. Come through, subscribe, all that good stuff. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, did you hear that? Movie News Roundup number 100. You might want to come check that one out because you might see some of the great folks that you see up here right now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you might see us on B. Avery's channel. Don't forget to like that video. Comment, subscribe, get that life game. We'll see you guys in the weekend.